Hey everybody, Josh Sertz in the World Alternative Media here, and of course we're joined by Tim Pachot, the Liberty Advisor, and there's a lot to talk about today because one of the number one crises that we face today is inflation. We'll go into why later, but we are seeing a massive rise in the inflation rate despite the Fed claiming that there is no significant rise in inflation, which we'll also debunk later because, I mean, it doesn't take much to go to the store. But um, Warren Buffett is uh, actually making some news regarding this. Not that Warren Buffett is the greatest guy to listen to, but uh, he, he is calling out something that is quite obvious, and that is the rise of inflation rate, which goes against what the Fed is saying is this uh, zero hedge. Article says, the costs are up, up, up. We're seeing substantial inflation amidst a surprise. <laughs> Warren Buffett, as Powell, Yellen, see nothing. A surprise, Warren Buffett. No, let me just be clear that we've been calling out this inflation madness for 10 years almost at WAM. So it's interesting to see him surprised by it because, I mean, anyone and their dog could see that inflation happening unless you're a multi multi billionaire that pretends to be charitable by trying to hide your money so that the government doesn't steal it, which is also noble, but at the same time disingenuous when you claim to be a charitable uh, person and the left loves you. Um, but anyway, I want to point out that he says we're seeing very substantial inflation. The nine year old billionaire who apparently does not have a Fed charge card said in his nearly six hour long address to investors, but it's what he said that was especially ominous. It's very interesting, he said, we're raising prices. People are raising prices to us and it's being accepted. Why does this matter? Because the ability to pass on price increases and have them stick means the surge in prices uh, will not be trans uh, transitory uh, no matter how many times the Biden ad administration, the Fed or the Treasury lie and vow the opposite. Um, and he made some very interesting comments during uh, this super long speech. Uh, but one of the things I wanted to point out is it goes against what, of course, Janet Yellen and Powell have been claiming. And as this Peter J. Dawson tweet mentions in the article, it says, how about the increased deficit, national debt, resulting quantitative easing, resulting reliance on China to buy our debt, increased taxes, resulting in 1.1 million lost jobs, stagnant economic growth. Do any of those worry Yellen after Janet Yellen dismisses, dismisses inflation fears over Biden's massive spending proposals. And on top of that, a lot of S&P uh, CEOs and a lot of the business calls that are happening right now are mentioning inflation uh, to a lot of their investors. Of course, as this uh, article from Zero Hedge says, we are at the early stage of the biggest COBRA effect in, history of, in the history of economics. And in it, you see this chart here and it says exhibit 10, mentions of inflation on calls more than tripled so far, pointing to higher inflation. It's up 300% the mentions of inflation uh, by uh, S&P 500 companies um, on their earnings calls. So, Tim, let's talk about this. This, isn't, this goes a lot further than just the price of lumber. Of course, we heard for a long time that the inflation rate was super low, like 2.5% a lot of the time. But what we actually ended up seeing before the pandemic was um, the fact that there were, uh, pr there's probably around 11.5 to 12% inflation rate according to John William Shadowstat. Now, after the fact, as they printed, I think 25% of the money uh, ever in one year, we're seeing probably close to like 20%. What do you think, what, what do you think of uh, Warren Buffett's comments and what do you think about the Fed's um, disagreement regarding the actual inflation number? Yeah, well, I mean, I wrote a whole book on how they rigged the inflation numbers called How It's Rigged. And I mean, if you take a look at what, and I'm glad that you mentioned shadow stats with John Williams, I think he's got one of the best resources when it comes to actually trying to figure out what's going on. But I mean, right now, Warren Buffett is sitting on, you know, quite a bit of cash. I don't know the exact amount. I think I read yesterday or two days ago, it was like $142 billion. So, you know, he is in more, which for him, you know, is a pretty defensive position. And one thing people need to keep in mind is there's something called the rule of 72. So let's say mm -hmm. the actual interest or inflation rate is 6%. You take 72 divided by whatever the inflation rate is. And then that's how many years it will take something to double. So uh, 72 divided by six is 12, meaning that every 12 years, the price of you know whatever good you're talking about would then double. But then imagine though, if you're keeping all of your money in cash or keeping it in a you know a short-term bond, you know basically earning Can't nothing. And we did point out last video that people are now lending the government money for nothing. 
nowadays, which I guess is better than, you know, negative rates over in Europe. And so, you know, if you're making $50,000 a year in retirement, and maybe that's fine, maybe you're living well below your means right now, but or maybe you're living at 45 or, you know, close to that 50,000 and everything is good. But what happens when 12 years uh, later, you know, basically your, your $50,000 a year buys you the equivalent of uh, 25,000. Then what, and, right. then, and another 12 years, then it's buying 12,500. Then another 12 years, it's buying, you know, 6,000. And so that is not even like a dire scenario. It's not like a hyperbolized scenario. It's not a fear mongering clickbait scenario. That is a very normal number six. We're not, you know, and so you, then, you know, use another number like 10 and then every seven years it goes, and then that's not even hyperinflation. And so without even getting into hysterical type numbers, you, a lot of people in America are going to be going broke safely as I've been calling it since mm-hmm. 2008. And, and the inflation right now is really in a lot of the financial assets. So you're seeing right. housing skyrocketing, especially out here in Phoenix, you're seeing most goods. I mean, even like, uh, you know, I think I saw an article about like Costco, even the paper towels. Now it's the same price, but it's 14% less paper towels in there because, so that's, you know, shrinkflation and right. another way that they hide things. And so, you know, if, if people think they're being, you know, really safe and even people who watch us and obviously the people that contact me are more liberty minded, more awake, more aware of what's going on. And even a lot of them, you know, keep their money really, really safe in short-term bonds. Uh, and I get, you know, why they do that, but, and, but if you're most scared of the dollar going down, you shouldn't have all your assets in the dollar. Um, right. you know, and, and before we continue with that, by the way, um, Tim Pichot is a certified financial planner. So if you want to become a client of Tim Pichot's, check the link below, thelibertyadvisor.com. If you are in the U.S., that is, of course. Um, and uh, his appointments are going fast um, because obviously he has really good results. But this isn't just a conspiracy theory anymore. I mean, for many years... Uh, it was called fringe and crazy conspiracy theories to claim that we could see runaway inflation, but we are literally seeing the very beginnings of that right now um, to a great extent. And uh, it's I've never seen a better commercial for gold and silver. I've never seen a better commercial for decentralized cryptocurrencies. Um, and I mean decentralized, not the centralized cash of society that's going to enslave us all. But uh, I think this really does point people in the right direction. I mean, it has to happen eventually. It's just so destructive because one of the number one things that people face, one of the worst problems in the world today is inflation. It bankrupts people. It destroys families. It destroys lives. It's why two parents could be working, being extorted by the government and at the same time be working for way more than people back in the 60s and end up with a tenth of the stuff that people in the 60s could afford. And I mean, that really says everything you need to know about how bad this is. And then you have the same thing with the whole wage situation, which at this point, I hope most people understand that when we're talking about minimum wage, all you're doing is putting the nut, making the number higher, but it, the value doesn't really go higher at the end of the day. You know, if it I, I like the best example I like to get give is mm-hmm. uh, in 1964, I believe, inflation or not inflation but the dollar you the minimum wage was a dollar 25 and so right. people back then could get paid in actual quarters that had 90 percent silver in it and so i'm not sure exactly where what a bs price of silver is today i think it's 25 dollars but anyways you know you take those five quarters it would be something like 30 bucks not even counting like spot price or anything today in minimum wage so if you got paid in those five quarters it'd be like you're making like 32 33 dollars an hour right now right and if you count spot you know it'd probably be like 40 something and so uh or not or if you count the premium I, I meant and so the problem is it's the money that is the problem which today we actually have currency we don't really have money and then you'd also mentioned the cobra effect and i didn't know what the cobra effect was uh and i had to go look this up and there was an economist Horst Siebert, never heard the word Horst before as a first name, but <laughs> uh, I actually Siebert, know a guy with that first name, but go on. <laughs> uh, coined the term cobra effect based on the following. When the British ruled yeah. India, the city of Delhi was infested with cobras to enlist, to enlist the public's help in eradicating the snakes. Officials offered a bounty on cobra skins. And then what did people do? They started breeding cobras. So then that way they could then turn in the cobra skin, just like you see like on these gun buybacks. And I've got to give people credit for this. Like people would just go build like this piece of shit gun that costs like $10 that, you know, is barely held together by duct tape and then turn it in and get like $200 for a gun buyback. And then I saw one guy who turned in like five piece of crap guns 
that he just like made with like out of like wood and stuff that barely even worked. And he turned those in and bought a real AR-15 with the, with the profits. So, you know, it just shows the unintended consequences. And so when you have the government saying, oh, we're going to pay people not to work, then what happens is, uh, you know, McDonald's is offering, in Florida is offering people 50 bucks to show up for an interview. There's other, you know, obviously more prestigious jobs in McDonald's that are paying people way more money to show up for interviews. Because if you can sit at home on your ass and get paid $400, uh, and then yeah. you have to go to work and get paid $500, well, who the F is going to go work for an extra 100 bucks when you can go sit in your ass and do nothing and get, and so then it then creates, so then mm -hmm. that's also an unintended consequence. And so they, but the thing is the government wants to make everybody renters. They want to make everybody basically subservient to them because the government that has the power to give you everything could take it all away. And then if people are broke and despondent, then they're going to vote for more bigger government, which are then going to be more uh, basically dependent on the, that same government and then create this whole slave-like caste society, which is basically where we're at already yeah. without even getting into crazy numbers. Like a 6% inflation number will ruin most people today. And then uh, this and won't, then, and this won't what if we get happen. to 20%, 40%, 50%? Right. What if we get to 100%? And then back in the 70s, they could actually have the run room to raise interest rates or I forgot what the Fed funds rate got up to, but let's say it was close to like 18%. They could not mm -hmm. do that today. They can't. They couldn't get the Fed funds rate up to two point two five percent before they had to go, basically, you know, backtrack on the greatest economy in the history of the world. Well, how come the greatest economy in the history of the world couldn't even support two point two five percent? Is because we're banked, the bankrupt, the entire basically economy is nothing but a Ponzi scheme predicated on pumping more and more fake money into the into here right like and and it does appear it does appear though that this is all by uh plan we could look at the great reset by 2025 economic reset but uh i do want to point out that this isn't just like the uh, the type of inflationary event that you'll see in venezuela or in uh, for example, in Germany, uh, or, you know, we've seen so many inflationary events, Argentina, there's been like 12 in like a century. Uh, this is the world reserve currency we're talking about here. So when the world reserve currency uh, leads to massive printing, insane debasement, and then an eventual collapse of said currency, or at least transition from that currency, what does, how does that affect not just Americans, but the whole world? I mean, that's going to be a massive, massive reset when it happens. And again, that's exactly what they're pushing for right now. The great reset, a complete economic overhaul of the whole world for the furtherment of, or the furthering of enslavement of the, of mankind. So how does that affect everyone in the world when the world reserve currency collapses? Well, a lot of the world has loans that are denominated in dollars. So a lot of like third world countries, you know, instead of getting paid in whatever, you know, crappy African currency that they have, you know, you're going to get paid in, uh, you're going to denominate your, your loan in dollars. And so if you have the dollar collapse, it could actually be, you know, a relatively good thing for them, unless it's on like a adjustable rate mortgage, then you're going to be screwed. And you're going to be, and, you know, at that point, it might be like an economic hitman situation where we just try to take over actual resources. But uh, for the rest of the world, it might not be too bad of a thing. Obviously, you know, when you rip a bandaid off, it's going to hurt no matter what. And so there's going to be, you know, pain. Um, and so, but you know, the rest of the world, I mean, a lot of people think that China, I mean, yeah, China, I mean, not to, and this could get in a big multifaceted debate, but you know, and one thing that Peter Schiff mentions is if you're in China, they're actually giving us real goods. I mean, they could be crappy goods, but they're giving us real stuff and we're giving them IOUs. So when it comes to like, who's actually getting screwed, I, I think the people getting the real stuff are getting the better end of the deal, which is, you know, mm -hmm. us and they're getting like this, you know, funny money. Uh, IO digital IOUs that's never going to get paid back with inflated away dollars. And so for the rest of the world, they're, why are they, you know, basically, you know, export, you know, importing their inflation to themselves right. by having the dollar be the world reserve currency when, you know, it doesn't really behoove the rest of the world to have the dollar. But a lot of countries don't necessarily want to be the world reserve because there's something known as Triffin's dilemma, which is, you know, you've got to run deficits as being the world reserve currency. And then those deficits over a long enough period will then eventually ruin that currency. And so right. this is something that, you know, is going to happen because the money is based off of debt or the currency is based off of debt. And so that's, and they're probably going to use this to usher in. We read today, there's some like digital dollar project where they're trying to explore ways where the federal reserve can, uh, you know, go cashless and, and by cashless, I mean, have a centrally controlled, basically cryptocurrency that 
uh, is going to track tracer value. And then if you don't, uh, you know, bow down to the government, they're going to go cut off your speech. They're going to realize. Yeah, it's not like you own this currency. It's a, you don't have private keys to the said currency. The bank does. And you just have to bow down to the bank and do as they say, get your vaccine passport, do all that, uh, you know, conform to the technocratic environment around you. It's all you. coming. And, it's all. Yeah. I mean, I, I bet within two years from now, you're not even going to be able to go to a hotel in America unless you have a vaccine passport or maybe they end up doing something where they the government doesn't make mandate the vaccines anymore but then all the private businesses do and then they select and then the thing pissing me off most is that they selectively enforce the uh you know the private business and private property so it's one thing if you know there should the private businesses should be able to do what they want but the thing is if if the private business wants to do something that the government doesn't want them to do, well, then all of a sudden now it's not a private business. And they well, can't well do Tim, that. Th- this is this is how they're going to do it. I mean, they, they'll make it beneficial for people to be part as they go into this great reset for people to be part, businesses to be part, states to be part, uh, governments to be part of this new uh, currency system. And everyone that isn't part of it will be left behind. So they'll say, hey, it's not that we're enforcing anything on you, but if you, it's like Visa and MasterCard. If you're a business that doesn't take Visa and MasterCard, you're gonna lose most of your business nowadays. And so with the cashless society, it's gonna be, yeah, well, if you want to be part of this new world, you have to, you know, basically uh, comply with this new great reset project, which in many ways is going to be a vaccine passport that's tied to a social credit system that's going to be part of a new currency. And that currency people are going to be able to use at hotels or use at bars or use at a sports game or use traveling, et cetera. But I do think it'll go state by state. So you'll still have a lot of places because the federal government won't be able to for- enforce that in all of the United States, but you'll still have many states in the US where the big cities are terrible for it, but like smaller towns will be a lot better. Um, that's why I like Mexico personally, because uh, there's like, it's so far. Or they, hold, or they crash the whole system and say, you know, hey, if you want to, you know, if you've got $50,000 in the bank, and you want to have your money be worth anything, you got to go trade it into our new digital dollar. And then we're going to reprice it at some sort of, you know, 20 cents on the dollar versus nothing on the dollar if you keep it in there. And they'll do some sort of gimmick to do something like that to then get everybody in there. We're seeing this big time now in China, seeing this big time, you know, even in, uh, you know, the European Central Bank is, you know, rolling out similar stuff. And you're going to see most of the world on this type of digital uh, yeah. reset, which is really the biggest thing that I, you know, after I read Creature from Jekyll Island, you know, probably a dozen years ago, like the biggest revelation I had is that eventually when, you know, that they're going to try to create this mark of the beast system. And that was one of the reasons why I didn't get into Bitcoin early on is because I thought it could be used as the mark of the beast. And I was sort of right because they're taking that technology and weaponizing it, but you can also take that technology to free you as well. And so everyone that wants to poo poo, oh, you know, you guys are just show for Bitcoin or you guys are, you know, you guys are pretty smart until you started talking about Bitcoin or people being like, I'm not going to listen to this guy because he's Jewish. Well, I'm not Jewish. So I don't know why people are writing that on bit <laughs> But you know, so it's, you know, it's just so, so funny that you see, uh, you know, people saying this, well, guess what, everything is going to be, you know, run through this cashless society anyways. And so you're going to have the government version of it, or you're going to have the private version of it. Uh, or a lot of those same people then have gold and silver, but they have it through a stock exchange, and they don't actually have it, right. which you know, it's basically the same as having your money in. Uh, yeah, having digital you know. version of gold, like, uh, I don't know, a certain guy by the name of Schiff seems to be selling. Anyway, uh, but like the thing is, uh, going forward, we need to prepare ourselves as best as we can. There's solutions. And one of the great things uh, that, uh, that you have, Tim, is the ability to have uh, your own private keys if you're working in cryptocurrency. Uh, I'm a big fan of that as a solution, as well as gold and silver. Um, Being able to hold your private keys is important. And that's the difference with this uh, cash society that's completely centralized and controlled. And you're given promissories on uh, digital currency that they're printing endlessly on a computer screen. And then they're attaching to a social credit system that says you can't do this if you don't if if, uh, you don't comply with us in this way or that way, vaccine passports, et cetera. We've already seen that in China. They've been doing that for a long time. And by the way, I'd, I'd urge everyone to go see our new documentary 
uh, with Dr. Judy Mikovits um, up on our BitChute channel, which um, has just gone public, which I'm really happy about. And of course, join our Telegram group, World Alternative Media, to keep up with a bunch of the information that we are putting out there. We, uh, it's growing really fast, so I appreciate that. But the solutions, Tim, I mean, uh, privacy coins are a big part of this too. Uh, you know, and even if uh, Jeb Griffin's a good friend of mine, and he's not a big fan of uh, cryptocurrencies, but even when talking with him about the privacy coins, he's like, yeah, that does seem like something that we need to be very closely looking at, because we need to have a way to be completely encrypted out of the system, not be able to be tracked, not be able to be followed. This isn't investment advice, but I'm a big fan of Pirate Chain. I'm a big fan of Monero. I'm a big fan of these, uh, like Wow Narrow. I don't, I'm not even in Wow Narrow, but I, I see a lot of evidence that they are doing really good work as well. And, and Epic Cash and stuff like that. I do see a big movement towards the privacy oriented cryptocurrencies that will keep people off of the vaccine passport uh, social credit score system um, where you know they're gonna shut down your bank account. You won't be able to spend money without complying. You won't be able to go anywhere, do anything, have a job, have a home. Your kids are gonna get taken away. It's now or never to get into the privacy coin so that you can at least spend out of your bank account now into a cryptocurrency without the bank shutting you down and stopping you from doing so. It's not even just about speculation. It's about having a tool to uh, hopefully keep you safe from the inevitable uh, technocratic society that we're entering into, the Great Reset, followed by the depopulation event that comes after by the year 2030. And that isn't conspiracy theory. It's what they say. They say you'll own nothing and that you'll be happy. And I say, I will own what I want and I'll be happy because I'm not going to comply with inhuman acts against mankind that are against nature and um, destroy the very basis of humanity itself. Survivalism, independence, freedom, and um, you know, the a big part of humanity, of course, is social, the social construct as well, which they're completely doing away with, which is what they did in Stalinist Russia, destroy the personal life. They said it themselves, destroy the personal life. You no longer have personal relationships. You're all a big collective and you all depend on each other. Well, I, I defend, depend on myself and, and, you know, the difference is individual responsibility is freedom. Collective responsibility is better defined as slavery. So um, we have to act quick. And anyway, Tim, uh, where can people go and find more information on some of the solutions that they can utilize in order to get around this massive inflationary event and maybe become a client? Yeah, you guys can go to the libertyadvisor.com and then there you can see, you know, more about, you know, the services we offer. And then you can also go to the media tab there and see all the other, you know, content that I put out and propaganda and stuff like that. That's always countering the man. It's the, uh, the good propaganda though. So, mm -hmm. you know, and like always, people should do their own research. People should look into things themselves and not just trust what we're saying. And, you know, certainly don't trust what, you know, Klaus Schwab and all those other bad guys are saying, but yeah, it, it is going to be different this time because, uh, you know, in the seventies and eighties, when there was inflation, it, 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 there was enough runway where, they, where we could actually raise interest rates to combat inflation. What are they going to do this time? Are, are they going to raise interest rates and then collapse everything even further? And so, you know, there's pretty much have gotten themselves into the ultimate hole. They should have, uh, you know, basically, you know, bit the bullet, you know, probably in 2014 and started raising rates and gotten ahead of this, but they didn't. They took the easy way out, but eventually the easy way out is going to be the hard way out because it's going to affect everybody. If you're trying to be really safe, sitting, keeping all your money in cash, you're going to go broke safely. And, uh, and, you know, unfortunately you only get one real chance at life. And so, you know, if you've saved all your money and worked really hard, uh, just implore you to not mess it up and do as much research as you can between now and the time. Cause you do have time right now. People are complacent. The market's still at all time high. So now is a good a time as ever looking at doing something to get you on a better, uh, on a better path. Absolutely. It's never been more important. So uh, I appreciate everyone watching. Hit the like button, share on social media, hit the notification bell, check the links below. We got lots of links and lots of, we, I got new shirts on the Teespring store uh, listed now. So make sure to go check out our Teespring store below. Join our newsletter, www.iamband.com. It just takes your email address. And of course, uh, we have a Telegram group, World Alternative Media, which is blowing up fast. So we really appreciate everyone that's joining there sharing these videos makes uh, makes the most difference. And of course you can support us. Uh, there's many ways you could support independent media below. If you wanna become a client of Tim Pachotes, you could go to thelibertyadvisor.com and we got a lot more coming up on the horizon. Um, do not forget to see our latest uh, video with Dr. Judy Mikovits in-person interview. Really, really uh, came together great. Um, it's about almost two hours, but it's some of the most powerful information you'll see 
all year. And it really hits you at the core. If you watch it all the way to the end, what, what comes out of her mouth, it's just unbelievable. It, it just completely, it's earth shattering information. And I wish more people, um, you know, share that stuff around because it really, unfortunately you can't share BitChute links anymore on Twitter. They banned BitChute links on Twitter. Um, but there's ways around it by using shoot.rocks instead. <laughs> and it, you can share the same video and it redirects and all that. Uh, also on Odyssey, of course, and on float.app, Rumble, and like usual, we're on the bad guys, World Alt Media on Twitter and World Alternative Media on Instagram for now. Probably not going to be on there much longer. Uh, you can go and find uh, Tim Pachote's uh, BitChute channel, The Liberty Advisor, as well as on Odyssey. Go subscribe there as well. And anyway, that's it for today. Really appreciate everyone watching. Thanks for joining us, Tim. And until next time, this is Josh Sigurdsson and Tim Pachote signing up from World Alternative Media. Find the truth, be the change. I'm sure you have already changed people's minds in your young age because you're involved and I like that.